Okay, you've had a regular brownie, but have you ever had a caramel crunch cornflake brownie? Because they're a game changer, so let's make them. You're gonna start by melting butter and dark chocolate until smooth. Set that aside and combine flour, cocoa powder, and sugar, then add in that melted chocolate and butter to the dry ingredients. Give it a mix, then add in the eggs one at a time. You're left with the yummiest brownie batter. You're gonna pour it into a lined baking tray and bake it in the oven. For the cornflake layer, you wanna start by melting sugar and it will eventually turn this lovely deep amber color. Remove it from the heat, then gradually add in the cream, then the butter. Once the caramel is made, add in those cornflakes and you wanna make sure every cornflake is properly coated. Then you're just gonna layer the cornflakes right on top of the brownies, flatten it out and let cool for about an hour. These are so good. They're fudgy, chewy, and crunchy all at the same time. You're gonna love them. Before you know it, those cold winter mornings will be here and you need to make these delicious chocolate chip pancakes. These are the best pancakes you'll ever have. I promise, let's make them. You're going to need one and a quarter cups of buttermilk, one tablespoon vanilla extract, two tablespoons of granulated sugar, one egg, four tablespoons of unsalted melted butter. Give that a good mix. Add one and one third cups of all purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, one quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and one quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I heard years ago that cinnamon brings out that chocolate flavor. Whether or not that's true, I love the flavor it adds. Don't overmix. Add one cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips, fold them in and let the batter rest for about five minutes. I like to use about half cup of batter per pancake. Spread it out a little bit. Cook in a buttered skillet for three minutes on each side. I like to add more chocolate chips, by the way. Do not flatten the pancakes. When you flip them, only flip them once, but definitely bring in the runny edges in like that. Smother them with syrup and enjoy. Today is the perfect day for an ice cream sandwich, more specifically this one with cookies on the outside, homemade vanilla ice cream, homemade cookie dough, homemade brownies, and a homemade caramel swirl. Now, if you do not have an ice cream maker, do not fret, do not worry, do not cry, okay? Because you can still make this, I will tell you how. For the outside, we made a special cookie that is formulated to stay soft when frozen. For the caramel swirl, we kind of did the same thing. Now, the raw cookie dough that's going in here. Eating raw cookie dough, to me, very acceptable. To most people, probably not. So we do bake off the flour to just get rid of a little bit of that bacteria. This is technically called Called heat treated flour but you don't really buy it at the store so you can pop it in the oven at 350 for like five minutes and it should bake off all the scary stuff and my parents were very sweet and helpful during this process they made the brownie here and this brownie stays super fudgy when it's frozen because it's purposely made underdone now this is the part where you not having an ice cream maker comes into play and you should still not be worrying are you worried don't worry, okay? Because all you have to do is get store-bought ice cream, let it sit in the refrigerator for an hour, it'll get super soft, it'll kind of get the same texture you see here, and then you'll add in all of those mix-ins just the same as I am doing. You can add as much cookie dough as you want, because it's your world, and we're just living in it, okay? Same with the brownie chunks, go crazy, or don't, up to you. And then you're just gonna layer it into the bottom of your cookie, and you're gonna place the other half of the cookie on top, you're gonna slice it up, and you're gonna have yourself a little treat, all right? Toodles. to make these insanely delicious giant chocolate chip cookies they are soft tasty and very chewy in the middle you want to first start off with some unsalted butter this has to be cold and you want to chop that into really small cubes and beat that using a hand whisk add in the light brown sugar and white granulated sugar and mix that together my baking products are linked in my bio so make sure you check that out for more details next you want to crack open two medium-sized eggs and mix this with the sugar and the butter mixture 
Grab your plain flour, I'm using two and a half cups here. For those that are curious, these are the cups I use. I literally got them from Poundland. I know so many of you are gram girlies, but I am sorry, I am such a cup girly. I deal with numbers all day long and I don't think my brain could handle it whilst baking. But I have put the recipe both in cups and grams in the captions, that way we all stay winning. Once the flour is mixed in and do not over mix, you can add in the chocolate. I use three packets in total, two packets of milk chocolate chips and one pack of milk chocolate chunks. Gently fold that through, refrigerate for at least an hour and once chilled start rolling out your cookie dough balls. I am using an ice cream scoop for this and of course it is completely your choice with the sizing you can make them small big whatever's your preference but yeah I did end up getting five large cookies out of my dough you want to bake these in the oven at 200 degrees celsius for around 16 minutes make sure they cool for at least an hour before you transfer them to a baking rack and serving dish as this allows it to set and they are ready to enjoy I know it's hard believe me it was hard for me but the cookies are very soft so it's important that you wait enjoy This peanut butter chocolate chip cookie pie is basically a giant peanut butter cookie baked in a buttery flaky mm. pie crust. It's surprisingly very easy to make. So we're gonna start with two eggs. Oh no. So much shell. And we're gonna beat them until they turn really light and frothy. Now we'll mix in granulated sugar and light brown sugar. I didn't have quite enough, so I supplemented with some dark brown sugar, but it's And then mix in some creamy peanut butter and softened butter. I almost forgot the vanilla. So now we'll just mix in the flour, salt, and our chocolate chips. This looks so good. And now we just fill up our pie shell. I'm using a partially baked homemade shell. I have the instructions with the rest of this recipe, but you can also use like a frozen nine inch pie crust to make this recipe even easier. I'm gonna brush the edges with a little bit of egg wash. Now this will bake at 325 for about 45 minutes. Okay, the pie has been cooling for about 45 minutes. It's still a little bit warm, so I'm gonna top it with some ice cream and dig in. Three ingredient Nutella pastry knots. These ones are so fun. And again, they do go viral and I do have a Biscoff version on my page, but just lay down a piece of puff pastry, spread your Nutella all across it, lay another piece of pastry on top, cut it into really thin strips and then pick up a strip and you twist it and then you swirl that twisted piece around itself and then egg wash it and bake for around 10 minutes and a screenshot here. Thank mm -hmm. you.